Welcome to the Potter Blog site. It's Monday, August 13th, 2012. Uh, this evening we have a maximum alert for removable cesium-137 contamination uh, reported in a Nuclear Regulatory Commission uh, event report for uh, August 13th, 2012. Uh, specifically, we're looking at event report 48178. And this is uh, out of uh, Susquehanna, Pennsylvania. Uh, the actual event occurred on August 7th. Uh, the contamination, and again this is removable cesium-137 uh, surface contamination. And that means is that it, it has not been on the uh, surface very long because it would be weathered off. It is from, or mentions being, uh, from a dry fuel storage uh, transfer trailer rig. Now, they claim this is not from the facility itself, and their rationale is, is that, uh, let's get here, the cesium-137 by itself is not a nucleide characteristic to Susquehanna due to Susquehanna's high fuel storage integrity performance. In addition, uh, no loose surface alpha contamination was identified. Now the key here is, is we believe this is uh, Fukushima related. If it's not Fukushima related, somewhere else is releasing CZ-137 and uh, the maximum alert still holds. Uh, 30,000 disintegrations per minute were measured on a 100 square centimeter surface. That means they took a wipe from a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square surface. Uh, again, it's removable contamination. We believe this came down in the rain on probably August 5th and contaminated this, uh, this tr uh, basically tractor trailer rig. And uh, if we go to uh, the radar map for August 5th of 2012, and this is UTC time, so this is actually six hours ahead, Zulu time, six hours ahead of the local time there, five or six. And we'll, look, we'll focus here in on the Susqu Susquehanna area. And you can see the uh, thunderstorms moving through. Uh, we'll go back six hours and back another six hours. Just so you can see how the, how the rain came through on August 5th. And went through that area over a several hour period. And now what we'll do is uh, go to the uh, jet stream for the same time period. This is from Zero Zulu August 6th, so this should be approximately, uh, I believe, 7 p.m. on August 5th local time in uh, Susquehanna. And if you see here on the map, uh, the jet stream is moving in. You see the arrows of the airflow direction. Uh, we'll move forward by six hours, and you can see how it's swiped up and through, and we'll go forward another six hours. Uh, so here we are, this should be uh, 6 o'clock, this is 6 o'clock in the morning on August 6th. Now this surface contamination that's uh, reported on this uh, tractor trailer rig is uh, going to come even before this August 5th period. The half-life on the cesium-137 is, uh, uh, is approximately 33 years I believe. And but since this was removable surface contamination, that's the key, it would have weathered off of this uh, trailer after some time period. So it's, this is from the recent time period. Uh, what we have here is our own St. Louis airborne radiation uh, measurement. We had a peak on August 8th of uh, 2012, about 11.30 uh, p.m. is when it started. Uh, this is in uh, counts per minute of gamma and beta radiation. This is on a, a standard sized uh, Geiger Muller tube. It peaked out here uh, 42 counts uh, per minute. This is a one minute measurement. If this had been a uh, taken on a, a pancake, a larger pancake style tube, this would have maxed out approximately 150 counts per minute. On our uh, 30 second moving average we used to trigger our alarm, our alarm actually uh, triggered, uh, which made us take a uh, a surface measurement, a surface swipe from uh, a piece of sheet metal we have in uh, we keep outside 
uh, to take uh, surface measurements from. And what we discovered there was uh, we had over 3,000 counts per minute uh, in a swipe of sheet metal. And this was taken on August 8th. Uh, there's, we even had a uh, 37 times background reading taken in the latter part of July. Uh, this particular event here was 91 times background. Uh, there have been exceedingly high reports of uh, radioactive uh, contamination in the rain, uh, short life contamination. Uh, we believe the short life, half life contamination comes out of the groundwater in Fukushima, naturally occurring, but it has with it the uh, longer half life uh, fallout from uh, both the uh, corium heating up the groundwater. And there's additionally the Japanese are incinerating their radioactive materials. So they're constant, re constantly releasing cesium-137 into the air. Hence, we believe we have this unusual detection here on the, from the reported to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Uh, we'll see what the follow-up of this is. Um, I believe what they should do is what Susquehanna is doing is then blaming it back on the, uh, uh, the people who delivered the trailer to them. And we'll see what claims are made of any uh, occurring there. In the meantime, stay out of the rain. This is not the only uh, cesium-137 uh, situation that's been reported building up in the rain in the last several months. and Not a good sign. Good evening.